the Sojourns special presentation about Indian Saint Ama Sri Karunamai and the loss of her beloved sister and constant assistant, Akaya. Akaya is very, very special sister, not a regular sister. She was a very sacrificed heart. She's ready to sacrifice anything for, especially for my sake. She sacrificed her total life for my sake. Each second she was living for my sake only in this world. Uh, so she's very special for me. I miss her so much physically, but she's in me. Amma, you say she sacrificed her total life for your sake. How did she sacrifice herself? So, SMA Trust is a big organization. So many activities we are doing, water projects, housing projects, hospital programs, schools, leprosy programs, and disabled children programs, wheelchair programs, so many programs. So, I have to work for all of these things um, to do so much work there. Akai are 24 hours working for for all of these things because of her only the schools she was raising a lot of fund for the schools to run the schools and the hospital projects and every year international uh, medical camps Akai was invited all the doctors she was working so hard behind the curtain she was not visible she was working, but she was so humble, very humble. I have a list of questions, as you know, about your sister, Akaya. Yet, Jody reminded me of one point that I forgot to mention here. And that is, as I understand it, not so long ago, you came across a diary from Akaya that was l filled with little stories and notes and lovely poems and budgeons. <laughs> Can you tell us about that? <laughs> Okay. Without, getting, without getting too personal? Yes. It's not personal. It is completely only about me. She was writing <laughs> everything. <laughs> she have no personal life. Her life is only occupied, entire life I occupied her life. Everything is in her life only about me only. Uh, so she was writing very high things about uh, Amma spiritually. She was see, watching Amma in a very high way in a very spiritual way and she was meditating every day. She would write about her spiritual experiences in meditations and also the disciples, how uh, she loves all the disciples and she loves Jody and <laughs> my dead son like anything. We spoke about all of you a couple of times and when we are traveling, every day we talk about all the disciples very good, all the time positively about everybody in a noble way, not any time negatively. So sweet, very sweet. She have no enemies. I'm sure. No enemies, no? Everybody, she loves everyone so much. It's our f eternal loss that we invited her to sit for an interview and she said, yes, Ted son. But it wasn't meant to be that day and we were never able to make that happen before she left us. So we, we mourn her loss extra because of that. You two grew up as sisters together under the same household and it's hard for me to picture you as a little girl with a sibling with a sister. So what was that period of your lives like for both of you interacting one back and forth? <laughs> was there ever any sister rivalry or jealousy? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have no jealous and no anger. Yeah, she was so polite. Very polite and very humble, very noble, very devotional, unbelievable devotion she have. Every day she chanted mantras, Lalita Sasnama, Rudram. She did uh, Navavranachana for Sri Chakra Puja. And she cooked for Amma. All the time she was concerned about me. She forget to eat herself and she was concerned about what Amma is going to eat, what Amma is going to have, she want to do more seva for me all the time. She was 24 hours in my service only. Mama, 
when you were children, did you play together and laugh and yeah. go to school together? <laughs> Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. You yes. mentioned she was with you and served you 24-7. Is there any area in particular that she rose above in her service to you? Is there any one trait that she did so well that you couldn't? Uh, Tetson, from the beginning of my life, all the family members have treated me in a different way. <laughs> <laughs> so they never treated me like their own sister, like a family member, no? So, so much love and devotion on me for Akkaya. Akkaya have unbelievable devotion on me. Uh, no, I cannot say that much devotion, I never see anywhere. So much devotion, so much faith and trust in me. Uh, so that's why we are playing, but all the time we are talking about um, spiritual things only. She was asking me bless and so many uh, times she was asking my blessings only, love only, uh, all the time expecting. Uh, when she was a little bit sick, you know, finally she was asking, can you give me liberation in a good day? She was asking, what day you are expecting liberation? You have to choose any good day. Uh, it's okay, or Vijidas me, then she told yes. So she was asking. That's but, yes. That's a point that she reminded us of a couple of years ago. That this was going to be, according to you, her final lifetime. And then you said to us yesterday that she has merged with Divine Mother. Yes. So did she know ahead of time that that was going to happen, or that? Yes, that she knew that. She knows that. So we should not be shedding any tears for our beloved Akaya. No, no. <laughs> she is in eternal. Yeah. And is she happy? Yes, she's in happy. She's in moksha now. How does the passing of a loved one in a family, how does the death of a family member impact an avatar? From the beginning of the life, all the people are, they are so fascinated towards me. They love me like Divine Mother. <laughs> so they never disrespect me. They never sit in front of me equal to me also. So all the time they sit down and love me so much. So that godly love is there in their hearts. We think, we've been taught to think of avatars living at a level of pure equanimity. So nothing faces you, good or bad, sad or painful or healthy. And yet I understand you shed some wonderful tears for the passing of, our, of Akaya. Actually, we need not cry for Akaya. Akaya, uh, from the beginning of her life, she was very special soul, very, very special soul, very divine. All the people, when people came to see Akaya finally, everybody told, we never see Akaya have angry, Akaya was impatient, Akaya lovers. Everybody spoke about Akaya, everyone, like in a divine way. Uh, so that's why Akaya personality, inner personality, with a lot of divine attributes. Mainly she was a saintly woman, very saintly life she led. Uh, and she had no desires and no any negativity, so pure soul, very, very pure soul, very blemishless soul. So we never <laughs> cry for Akaya, all of us. We love her so much. When Akaya gave up her body and Vijidasmi, really all of us very happy. She got liberation from this physical existence and merged in myself. Uh, if anybody was in deep pain, in problems, in hospitals, they called Akaya. Akaya immediately informed me and she made me to speak with them. She told, please talk with them. Please talk with them, comfort them. So, through Akaya phone, I spoke with people when they are in pain, in problem, in hospitals. Mm -hmm. she, she built the bridge between all the children in the entire world, any country, any continent, any time, if anybody was in pain, Akaya built the bridge and make me to walk and uh, physically I have to comfort them. She, she told me, please, physically you have to comfort them. You are eternal, we know that, but you have to physically comfort them. Your one word is gives them so much hope, uh, peace and solace, you have to speak with them. She told me, so through her phone I spoke with people, midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock, it doesn't matter, <laughs> uh, 24 hours we are available to people. 
two final questions. Had Akaya been with you in previous lifetimes? <laughs> <laughs> or is that too personal? <laughs> Akaya was asking me uh, so many times this wonderful question, what you ask is connected to this question. One day she was suddenly asked me a question, when you are going to come back? Where? U.S.? Not U.S. to this world. <laughs> to this world. Uh, okay, I can't come back frequently to this world, I told. <laughs> okay, whenever you come back, please bring with me. I want to do your seva. Uh, I don't need moksha, I just want to be with you, she told. But now she has moksha, she's not coming back to be with you again. If I wish, I will bring her back from moksha. <laughs> And the final question is Jody's, and she put it so simply, and you've already touched upon it, but to wrap it up, how would you describe Akaya to a total stranger? Akaya, very holy, Tetson, very holy. Her behavior was very tremendous behavior. She, if anybody with Tamma know, they want to command people, demand people, they want to do bossy on people, Akaya never do that. Akaya was not bossy for anyone. She was so humble with everybody. Her main focus is on me only. Mm -hmm. What Amma need, what I have to do for Amma. If anybody comes in problem, in challenges, then Akaya was immediately respond to them. And they, uh, she brought them to Amma, make them to talk with them, and please solve their problem. If anybody in problem, no, she brought that problem to me and she was asking behalf of them. Some people are not able to directly talk, they talk with, they feel fear to talk with me. So then Akaya told, uh, behalf of them, please they have this problem, solve the problem, help them, uh, show your kindness. So she was so humble in such a great way, very special soul. She never uh, influenced on people, she never expect anything from anybody. Her total focus on Amma and then on Amma's work. Mm -hmm. She told to all the family members also, don't think Amma is our family member, don't treat like that. So she told all the times to the kids and everybody. So they are also not, uh, they are so humble and very, everyone was so nice, so nice, very nice family. Wonderful. Thank you, Amma. Be sure to tell Akaya that all of us love her and miss her. Tetson, definitely. <laughs> love you, Tetson. Love you. Uh, my love to all of you, uh, my little angels, babies. I love you love so much, like anything. Welcome all of you for Amma's programs. And so I'm here in this world, not for any other act activities. I want to serve all of you from the bottom of my heart. Your challenges are my challenges. Your problems are my problems. Your happiness is my true happiness. I am here in this world only for your happiness, uh, to heal your hearts, to make you give liberation from all of these um, external lifestyles and all the things, to experience the eternal happiness and joy in this Amma special blessings once again to all of you. I love you like anything. I haven't heard you say this in a while, so we'll say it to you. Amma, we love you a gazillion, gazillion times. I love you gazillions and gazillions of times. <laughs> love you, Jody. Jay Kern am I. Akai is a very unique soul. And uh, we got to know her from the time that Amma started coming to the U.S., which was back in, 19, in the late 90s. And, um, and Akaya, uh, in her uh, you know, in, in her early years, she had taken a, a vow to serve Amma uh, and not uh, have a family life of her own. I think I heard once that her father came to her before he died yes. and instructed her to. Exactly. So she, she was asked by her father to give a a vow that she will serve Amma for, for her life and, and so uh, Akaya uh, took that commitment and, uh, and so she, that's what her life is just taking care of Amma. Yeah, you know, I just remember Akaya. Akaya was just the most sweetest woman that just loved Amma with all of her heart and 
and served her for all those years. I just remember going to India way back, way back when, and she would invite me over to her, to uh, uh, the Ganesha tree. We mm -hmm. would sit there and she would just tell stories about Amma and uh, magical stories. Uh, so I, I had the good fortune to meet Amma many years ago and uh, Akaya was right there with her and uh, she really was a great example of, of devotion and just selfless service. I mean, in the flesh, right there, right next to Ama, and just a great example. So she really inspired me. She's always, you know, not thinking of herself. She's always there with Ama, Ama's things, Ama's purse, the small things, small items, big items, asking about what we can do for Ama in our city, uh, trying to help network with people, you know, introducing me to different people, and just really sort of, and she did it with such ease and comfort and a friendliness that was very, you know, it's easy to connect to. It wasn't like she had a mission. She did have a mission, of course, but the way she related was so down to earth. She was so humble, so uh, so inspiring. Akaya is one of the sweetest soul on the earth I have met. She sort she told me a lot about herself, her growing up, and Amma growing up with her. One of the things I can say, her father used to say when Akaya, um, to Akaya, when Amma was born and growing up, don't think Amma is just your sister. She is divine. She is special. So we don't ever forget that. <laughs> Funny thing Akaya would say, at, uh, she was hardly a child too. I didn't know what, I didn't understand much what my father was saying. He is saying something, I don't know. <laughs> See, that, it was for her, she couldn't understand that little mind at that time when he was talking about Amma. I loved Akaya from the first minute I met her, a pure soul whose only mission was to serve our beloved Amma. She once told me that their father would have them up very early to meditate since they were quite young. Many a time, he would catch her dozing. We laughed about that together. Another time I asked her how it was to grow up as Amma's sister, considering all the attention Amma got. She replied that when she was very young, she often thought, if she is divine, maybe I am too. But later, Amma showed her some things that convinced her that Amma was indeed divine, but Akaya did not elaborate. Akaya really cared about the disadvantaged people especially the children of the remote region where Amma now has her ashram. She worked tirelessly to give them access to education, medicines, clean water, and much, much more. I miss her, a great example of pure devotion and quiet fortitude. She was my aunt. She was a role model to me because uh, a person can learn many things from Akaya. Her level of patience, Used to, used to be like sharp. The way she used to receive any message, because it, though it was a very shocking message, somebody comes and put you know, here, the way she used to receive it with a very smile, with a smile. How close were you to her as you were growing up? Uh, she was more than my biological mother to me, because I was very close to her than my mother. When you're around Amma, obviously we see lots of unusual things that happen. Um, some dramatic, some really subtle, but things that are mysterious. And I, one comment that Amma made is that Akaya was, was wonderful that she never questioned Amma. She never brought Amma into dialogue when something unusual happened, and Amma really appreciates Even that. though Akaya was the older sibling. Oh, Akaya was the older sibling. I just remember that uh, in maybe 15 years ago that, that Akaya was, was carrying around some beautiful photos of Amma in the jungle, and as she was sitting in the jungle with these tires lying around here very peacefully, and just such a beautiful experience. You know, well, I was so blessed to spend the time with Akaya, the way you talked about, you know, always the spiritual. And we're similar in that she kind of did social work and things, and discovering that we had some things in common in working, um, the kind of work she did in India for the government, and then with Sai Baba, and like all the different things, and being concerned with everyone on the spiritual level, because that's how she looked 
at the world to do good, be kind, be compassionate, be like God and embody how God and Amma and Mary and whoever you believe in to just live your life that way with kindness and compassion so that always just followed her wherever she was. You could see people smiling at her and laughing and she would touch them and they would touch her and you could just see the connection with her and the people because she just lived by kindness in her heart. You could just feel her heart open all the time, so it was so easy to just be drawn in to her. Oh, just so incredibly sweet. I'm so blessed to call her my friend. And that's why I really yeah. miss her. Yeah. Akaya was like a mother to Amma. She would take care of all of Amma's personal needs and beautifully decorate Amma's feet every day. Akaya was very sweet and loving to all of us, but very protective of Amma. She was a silent worker, always there with Amma, behind the scenes, helping her with her mission. She never wanted to be in the limelight. My husband, Chander, once took Amma to the golf course at Amma's request. I think my sister and Akaya also went along with them. Akaya always came down early in the morning and got things ready for Amma's daily puja, Items like flowers, water, milk, tulsi leaves, and ghee lamp with pure cotton wicks. Akaya loved the special cotton wicks made by Chandra's mother with pure cotton. She would ask me about them and take a whole box full for Amma's daily pujas while in the U.S. When she toured America on her individual blessing days, Amma would meditate for about seven or eight hours before meeting with others. She would do this to charge herself with special powers to take people's negativity onto herself and heal them. Akaya always made sure we kept complete silence in the house while Amma was meditating. She brought down Amma's clothes to be washed and ironed separately and told us that Amma's saris should not touch the floor while ironing. So we put a clean white sheet under the ironing board before ironing her clothes. On travel days, Akaya would pack Amma's and the crew's food and water herself and make sure that every needed item was included. Akaya always cared for all of Amma's needs, big or small, and she did it with great motherly love, devotion, and care. Akaya was truly one with Amma, and Amma shared everything with Akaya and loved and trusted her dearly. And Akaya was a very quiet person, but very strong-willed person. And, um, uh, and so she will make sure that everything happens exactly the way it should happen for Amma. And, uh, and, and, and she will, you know, rule with an iron hand in, the, in that. Uh, Which is such a surprise to hear because all of the many people around the world who got to know her, at least on the surface, because as I said, she was pretty quiet, but radiated love. Yes. So she was this meek, humble, quiet, soft-spoken woman. She, she is very soft, but very firm. And that's what I mean when I say so you that. want to work for a person yeah, like that. exactly. So she is, you know, when, when she says that, oh, Amma needs this to be done, or, um, and she will want this to be done yesterday, not tomorrow. And so that is the time scale on which you have to operate when you're working with Akaya. Is she's always saying, okay, Amma has requested that this be done, and therefore we have to, got to get this done, and we have to get it done now. She was a very great meditator. She was a very great meditator, and she was. Uh, she has. Re she used to write and sing many bhajans on Amma. She was a backbone for the organization also. However, busy she was, she had some time for uh, us, like in the family, for, especially for the kids. She used to love us a lot, and uh, though she was very busy with her schedules, she used to take time off and she used to come and see us. She has done very good hostels. dedicated, affectionate sister. When they first started visiting Columbus, I volunteered to cook South Indian vegetarian food for Amma and Akaya. For more than 10 long years, I would meet with Amma and Akaya every year. I used to taste the food I cooked for Amma for fear of missing any important ingredient, which would make the dish taste badly. Later, I confessed this to Akaya, that I would first check the food for flavor before serving it to Amma. 
every time they would come to America, Akaya would call me from the first town they visited and tell about that city's program success and the main events. Aka, as I used to call her, would often save the Homa Prasadam, like Modakas, and give them to me secretly and affectionately when I visit them in Columbus. Aka once told me the story of Amma as a young girl going into the forest to do penance. And Aka told me that at one time she was adamant and went along with Amma to a small hut that was built to protect Amma in the jungle. And Amma told her that night that do not wake up or come out of her bed at any point. That night, Aka said she heard some strange noises where Amma was and saw long, long shadows of people, people taller than seven or eight feet, with hair twisted as knots on the top of their heads like rishis. Next day, she developed high temperatures and was sent back to their house. I think this was an incident also being mentioned in one of Amma's life history books. While visiting us in Columbus in 2012, Aka once said that because of her love, affection, and devotion towards Amma, that she never thought of getting married in life and never missed married life. She said the rest of their sisters are happily married and settled in life, but for her, Amma is her only family. After Amma would finish their U.S. tour each year, Aka would call me from the last town and let me know when they would return for their next visit to Columbus in the following year. So I was expecting Akka to stay back to get better and get more fit for her next trips and anticipated that maybe in next trips she would feel better and I could have our little private moments back again with her. Now, knowing that Akaya can no longer accompany Ama on her trips to America, I miss her, but I will always remember her smiling face and the affectionate pat she would give me whenever I would meet her during their visits. How would you describe that essence of hers? Selflessness. She was uh -huh. just selfless. She just uh, was always serving and didn't so much care about herself so much. How are you doing, Bhavani? How are you doing, Ted? Uh -huh. She was always caring about the people around yeah. her more than herself. Okay, what I have to do for you? Nothing, nothing. I'm so sorry for to disturb you this time. Uh, because your morning onwards individual blessing, going, traveling, no? We reach home 12 o'clock every day night. So then she don't like to disturb me at that time, but she have to disturb. Then she told, this is really emergency. There's so much crying, all the family members. So please, you have to bless them. Uh, so bless them divinely and talk with them also one second. They're crying so much. If they listen your words, they get a lot of hope and strength. So that kind of thing Sakaya was doing so wonderfully. Uh, so let all of us have to be like that only for other people's sake. What Akaya get by make me to speak with somebody, she never get anything, no? But she have to do that. As a human being, you have to do that. Each human being have to do like that. That's the responsibility of any human being also. Not only Akaya. Everybody, if you know somebody was in deep problem, you have to attend that and bring that problem to Amma, make Amma her heart soft and to connect with them, build a bridge to them, people who are in need. So because Amma is here in your world, you, you have to build that bridge, make the people have to comfortable, get some relief and talk with mother and that's, that's the responsibility you have to do. Uh, so. All of us have to do this kind of things, no? Very nice and really we love you so much. We love you so much. Love only is the wealth of us. If you have no love, you have no wealth. You are so poverty. Of course, you have millions of money also. You are in poverty only. Poverty. Love is the wealth. Love is the greatest wealth. Peace is the wealth. Love gives us peace. really misses her and Amma puts Akaya at, uh, at here, at there, and I mean she is really, she misses Akaya, uh, you know, 
that's that, which he has a tremendous respect for Akaya. If at all we talk about Akaya, first thing comes in our mind is uh, Amma. <laughs> because if at all we talk about Amma, first thing comes into our mind is Akaya. <laughs> so they both were together for such a long time. So Akaya, uh, there was no second thought for Akaya other than Amma. But uh, it's very rare because we can we cannot see people like that so often to spend uh, the entire life for uh, the Guru. And her last words were Amma, Amma, Amma. They told me in her body. Amma, 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 Amma. That was her last words from her. She was very peaceful. She left very peacefully.